Let me turn this on and do it again. Good afternoon. I have to have that reverb in my voice. <laughs> uh, today is Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. It is 1 p.m. We are in the chamber, city chambers, and I call this city commission special meeting to order. Uh, roll call of the commission is Commissioner McDowell, Commissioner White, Mayor Luke, Vice Mayor Emmerich and Commissioner Langdon, so there is a quorum for this meeting. Uh, charter officers, we have Interim City Manager Yarborough, City Attorney Slayton, uh, Assistant Clerk Adrian Gianelli, and City Clerk Taylor. Uh, we have Fire Chief Titus in the back, And we have an officer in the front with us. I don't see Chief back there quite yet. All right, I'm going to ask Ms. Gianelli if she will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. She is our assistant city clerk. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ma'am. All right, we are on to the approval of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner McDowell, uh, seconded by Vice Mayor to approve the agenda as presented. Go ahead and vote, please. And that passes five to zero. Thank you very much. We are on to public comment. And we do have, to, well, is there any for general comment? Do you have any online? We do not. Okay, we have two, but it is specific for uh, the item. All right, so with no public comment at this point in time, we are on to general business. Uh, Item 21-0519. This is a discussion <coughs> of possible action regarding the review and prioritization of the, the parcels nominated to the SLOC program. Uh, that would be the Sarasota County Land Acquisition Programs because there's actually two of them. Interim City Manager, uh, would you introduce the item, please? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, a, a particular note, uh, I'm going to uh, have Parks and Rec kind of take the lead on this, but before I do that, I just kind of want to draw your attention. <clears throat> there are three nominations or areas that have been nominated, um, and one of them is an Innovation Park, also known as Activity Center 4. One of them is the uh, Crossings, also known as Activity Center 5, and one of them is Trailside, also known as Activity Center 1. You may just want to pay particular attention to those, as in they may have long-term um, uh, business or economic impact if, if those go into conservation area at the time. At this time, I'll yield the floor to Trisha uh, Wisner to uh, address Thank you very tonight. much. Good afternoon, Commissioner Trisha Wisner, Assistant Director of Parks and Recreation. Um, we are here to discuss the prioritization of many parcels that have been nominated both by the city and by residents to Sarasota County, Parkland, and or environmentally sensitive <coughs> land protection programs. Before I begin, I want to let you know that our GIS team is outstanding, and John Kalsbeck did a great job plotting all of these parcels. He was unable to be here today, so Justin is going to be the man running the map, <coughs> um, and we'll try to get to where we're talking about as quickly as possible as we go through this. Um, so as Mayor mentioned, Sarasota County has two programs with which to nominate and acquire land. Um, this is the Environmentally Sensitive Land Protection Program, ESLIP, and the Neighborhood Parkland Program. These are voter approved. They have been through a referendum and they are taxpayer funded programs. They started in 1999 with the Environmentally Sensitive Land Protection Program. That was expanded in 2005 to include the Neighborhood Protection Program, Parkland <laughs> Program. And um, these go through 2029. So there's about 10, 12, and nine more years on these. Um, parcels can be nominated by a municipality, an organization, the landowner. They can come in multiple ways. 
There is one form for them, which makes it nice. So you'll see the same form over and over again used for these parcels. Um, and they can be submitted to one program or both programs. Now the programs have different criteria with which to evaluate the um, nomination. The Park Advisory and Recreation Council, the Park Board, that um, oversees the neighborhood parkland nominations. Those are evaluated based on location. The broad community access, proximity and connectiveness to other public parcels, natural features, cultural features, um, whether or not it's compatible with community needs. So if a park is missing in that area, it might be higher value. Um, and <coughs> water access is always something that they're looking for. The Environmentally Sensitive Land Oversight Committee, SLOC, they look at the environmental nominations. And these are more um, the rarity, the quality, the natural habitat, the connectivity, manageability, and water access. Um, parcels must have willing sellers. So on February 18th, 2021, we received a letter from Sarasota County Administrator asking us to review the nominations and to help reprioritize those so when the boards are looking at them, they can understand the city's desire and the priority for those parcels, since we do have quite a few parcels at this time. It should be noted that on February 4th, the SLAC, at the SLAC meeting, that board decided that the North Port Scrubby Flatwoods Protection Priority Site, that's the one off to the far west, um, Debbie Blanco had come and spoke to us. There's also a secondary nomination from Van, uh, forget the last name, San Vincent. Um, that area right there, they did not nominate that to move forward through the process. Um, however, the Northport Scrub Protection Priority Site, that's what we kind of refer to as Constitution, um, that was approved and recommended to move forward. Um, so we have a lot of parcels. We're looking for direction as to prioritize these parcels. Um, is there any particular order in which you'd like to review them? Uh, I think we'll go into the questions and the ones that probably are being talked about. We'll just go to them instead of going one by one. Uh, I will state to start with, I did a lot of research into this and there was a lot of confusion. I think there's been a lot of confusion for years as to how this program operates. And I found way back in 2009 where the city is supposed to be given a prior citation uh, list. We're to be prioritizing them. And so there was a lot of confusion when they were sending letters saying, where is your list? And we're like, well, why do we have to have a list? So it was going back and forth. So this is a bona fide request that is within their codes that we are to be furnishing this. So with that, uh, Commissioner McDowell, you have the floor. Yes, um, Mayor, I just have a couple of general questions. Be Sorry, Mayor, I do have a couple of general questions before we proceed on to each one of the properties. Um, my first one was um, based on what city manager had brought forward about the new names of activity centers. Um, I don't know what the process is, but does commission have to formally adopt those new names or is it just, these are the new names? I will ask from somebody to plan, from planning to come down and because they're mentioned in our comp right. plans, that's the reason why I'm asking. Right. I did my best to include both names. Although, yeah. um, Nicole Gale, House Planning and Zoning Division Manager. Um, so we did the public polls and, and selected the new names. So we're trying to use those moving forward. We will have to bring it forward as a comprehensive plan amendment, um, which we are working on um, for our activity centers separately. Um, to get final commission approval. Okay. And since city manager went through them so quickly, and I'm like, what is he talking about? Sorry. I knew that we had talked about changing the names. Yes. Um, could you tell me again what those activity centers are? You said something about Except, trailhead. Yeah. It's, go ahead. You want to do it? Or you want to yeah. Do, do you want me to go through all nine of them? Acti no. which, or whichever just... ones that changed. Okay. So um, Mediterranean, which was AC1, changed to trailside. Okay. Two, State is Heron Creek. Three, State is Gateway. Four was Panacea. 
and is now uh, Innovation Park. Innovation? Innovation Park. Um, five was Midway, and it is now The Crossings. And the Midway is? Toledo, Blade, and Price. Thank you. Six was The Shire, and it's now Yorkshire. A little less Hobbit-like. Yeah. Um, seven is still The Springs. Eight is, eight was The Gardens. This is the one that's going to, I'm, I'm. Mayaka Connection. Mayaka Connection. That's, that's the one I can remember. Thank you. So eight was The Gardens. And it's now Mayaka Connection. And where, what? That one's on River Road. Thank you. The Connection? Mayaka Connection. Mayaka Connection. City Manager, could we have staff send an email Absolutely. Uh, to the commission so they all have it. We can do that. It. <laughs> we can do Absolutely. It. And Central then Park State Central Park. Central Park State Central Park. So only five have changed. Yes. Thank you. Um, sorry to take us off topic, but he had mentioned it, and I wanted to make sure I under, understood the new names and new location. Thank you. Um, the other question <coughs> that I have is when... I think it was you, Ms. Tricia, that said that Sarasota County had approved Constitution Drive and is moving forward. Does that mean then that we do not have to include it in our priority or should we still include it in our priority? There are a couple layers within how the Environmental Use of Land Oversight Committee uh, moves forward the process. First, they have to determine a priority to protection site or zone, so a general area that they say that has land that we're interested in finding a way to protect. Then parcels are nominated within that general area. We're prioritizing the parcels, not the priority area. So the priority area has been um, accepted by the Environmentally Sensitive Land Oversight Committee. We're talking about whether or not these particular parcels within that priority are a high priority for us. Does that make sense? So do we have to individually name each one of those, and I'm guessing 50 parcels, or can we still continue to refer to it as constitution? We can continue Thank you. as constitution, knowing that it's already within an area that they've said would be a good area to acquire land. So when we're having the discussions, we still have to keep constitution on the forefront if that's our desire. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Mayor, that's all the questions I have for general. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Langdon, you have the floor. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I see that some of these parcels are in activity centers or areas that have been identified in the economic development feasibility study as prime developable, developable areas. Um, I would like to request that we not prioritize uh, parcels in those areas because we have such limited um, space for commercial development. Is that all you have to say? That's it. Okay. Um, anybody else at this point? I have no other lights on. Um, I'll go ahead then because there are no other lights. Uh, I'm in agreement also. I think anything that is um, in an activity center or a neighborhood commercial that is designated within the comp plan to uh, promote commercial uh, we are lacking behind in that percentage that we need uh, to maintain balance uh, community. Uh, there's enough areas outside of those commercial areas that we can designate to preserve. I don't think we need to take away from the areas that we're driving, trying to point the commercial to. So I am in agreement to that. Does anybody, any other commissioner want to comment on that topic? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, the only one that I, I, I agree 100% with what is being said, but I do have a question mark on the 41 um, property that's right along the creek that was recommended by a citizen as a possible parkland because it's really not developable, developable um, being so close to the creek. And I'd like staff to weigh in if it is something that can be commercially developed on that property given the close proximity to the creek. 
Yeah, I'm going to uh, have planning come back down to have a conversation. You might as well just get a front and center yeah. seat, you know. Exactly. I think you all are going to be tag team in this one. <laughs> I'm Nicole Gilhouse. Speak to that. Before she speaks, I, as a general rule, I would not recommend, I, I'm kind of in concurrence with, I, I would not recommend giving up any of your activity center land because at the end of the day, and I don't want to, uh, hopefully I won't be in conflict with what Nicole's about to say, if a developer has enough time and money, almost anything in a commercially uh, designated area can be developed. But I will uh, defer to Nicole. Uh, yes, and I, that's essentially what I was going to say as well. Um, you know, anything is developable with the, with the right resources and the right um, like funding put into it. Um, with this particular property, I don't know that the entire piece is able to be developed because there is a lot of wet on that property. Um, but I don't think that necessarily negates it from being functional for something. Um, you know, a, a waterfront restaurant, exactly. That's what, We talk about this property and we're like, that's perfect for that. Um, so I think there's still potential here on this site. Thank you for that clarification. I do appreciate it. That's all, man. Hey, uh, a kayak and canoeing uh, outlander type of facility, I think, would be excellent there also. Uh, you said that's all, Commissioner McDowell? That's all I on, have. on that topic? Uh, Commissioner? On the, and then we can probably get a consensus. Exactly. That's what I'm Thank driving you. for. Commissioner White, do you have any comments on that topic well, also? Just, I just wanted to clarify specifically what properties you're talking about. I know the Toledo Blade to Price would be one of them. Are we going to really it, be sure we're clear? It, if I could, you're talking about the nominations for parcels along Panacea and Plantation. That's Activity Center 4, a.k.a. No, formerly Activity Center 4. And all the properties along our, that are within uh, Panacea and Woodlands DRI. The properties uh, at Toledo Blade and Price, those are within Activity Center f uh, 5. And then the uh, 41 parcel, U.S. 41 parcel. Right. Okay, so it's actually what's labeled Patacea and Plantation Boulevard. Is that what? Is, isn't that Patacea Woodlands? Yes. Yep. Okay. Sorry. And what was the other one you said? Uh, and uh, the other one was Toledo Blade and Price. Yes. The other one's along 41. <laughs> Those are the only three that have commercial value. Yes, sir. That you're talking three. about. Yes, ma'am. That's, okay. that's I all I see sure. on the list. Okay. Yes. Anyone else to that topic? All right, I'm going to see if we can get a consensus that we do not prioritize any properties that are designated for commercial within activity centers or neighborhood commercials. I'll start with Commissioner Langdon. Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. I'm a yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner McDowell? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. City Manager? Your I don't know if you want to even go further. Um, you may even want to communicate that you would not like to see them acquired at all. Uh, and you stated that you don't want to prioritize them, but you also may want to state that you don't want them acquired at all underneath either program. Something to think about. You mean uh, going forward? Yes. Yeah, going forward is, going is forward. what he's talking about. Um, I was kind of aiming toward that when I said not prioritizing any properties. That's where I was headed to with that. Um, with the clarity of knowing where I was headed that properties that are in activity centers or neighborhood commercials would not be up for future nominations. Would you accept that as a consensus, Commissioner yes. Langdon, Vice Mayor? Yes. I'm a yes. Yes. Commissioner McDowell? Yes. You have that, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and I apologize. One, one more clarification. I'm sorry. Uh, um, Nicole, can you restate what you just told me? Um, you may just want to clarify um, when it comes to the um, Woodland Panacea area, the DRI. Um, the DRI, not just the activity center, because not all of the DRI is in the activity center. Um, so it doesn't cover all of all of it. <laughs> But it covers portion of it. It would only cover the portion that's in the activity center, which would be the areas north of 
And you're, you're, you're talking panacea. about along Panacea Boulevard. Right. So the areas that are north of Panacea are in the activity center, mm -hmm. um, but the areas south of Panacea are not, but they are part of the DRI and do have development entitlements. And the individual who submitted that one is just looking for a conservation easement. Um, but let's go ahead and address this one. Commissioner McDowell, your light is on. So in the DRI, where would there be commercial development? Uh, to me, it sounds more like you're talking about residential development. I'm wondering about commercial development that is not included in the activity center. Where would there be commercial development in the DRI? Not it would not be commercial, most likely. I think you're correct. It would be residential, but they do have the entitlements in place for that through the DRI. For residential? Yes. Okay. So I, I think we're trying, if we go that route, then these other residential properties would then be subjected to, I think, what you're saying, because it's a DRI versus just residential. I, I don't see quite the difference there. And, and maybe there isn't. I just don't know if from a, an entitlement standpoint with what the DRI process goes through, if that provides additional consideration. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure if it needs it or not. Could you explain the DRI process? I mean, are they promised to be able to utilize it over a single residential lot? So, I mean, the, the entitlement process is, is very long, very cumbersome, um, and very, very expensive. Uh, we don't do DRIs anymore. They are mm -hmm. a thing of the past. The entitlements are still in place for these, um, <coughs> these areas. The DRI in this case allots them, I want to say it's 3,500 units in the Woodlands area. Um, so, you know, taking that away from them may have impact. It, it may make it. It may shift that uh, entitlement to a more concentrated area. In other words, the thirty-five hundred could still be done, but now it have less land to spread it out on. So it may have unintended consequences we haven't thought through yet. Is what we're trying to communicate. All right. If the DRIs are only existing now and they're going away, Commission, we need to make a decision as a body of whether we want to eliminate any nominations within these areas, or do we strictly want to stick with the commercial? Uh, how do you feel, Commissioner Langdon? I would stay with the commercial. I don't want the commercial. Uh, Commissioner White? <clears throat> yes, only the commercial. Yeah, and I would not be in favor of, ex of saying no nominations for the DRI. Um, just focus on the commercial stuff because these DRIs are not going to go away in this area, but they have to still come back for the development of those properties. So I, I just, I don't see the purpose of excluding them at this point. Okay. Uh, the majority of the board is definitely, actually, I think it's uh, unanimous that they do not want to include the DRI. They want to just restrict nominations from commercial areas. Um, the individual, as I stated, who wanted that one, I believe was just looking for a conservation easement. So there might be another route that would be better entertained by that solicitor. Okay, I uh, have no lights on. Is there anybody with anything else? All right, um, with that, I'll go ahead um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of background of what, of what I know, and you'll hear more about it probably in the following meetings. Um, SLOC has $18 million, and the reason that they've got 18 is $9 million was set aside for them to purchase uh, orange hammock. And because the state purchased it, it, they have that extra 9 million. So there is 18 million within their funds, but that is for an entire county. And so it's imperative, I believe, that we look at these lots or these areas that we have before us 
and pick out the ones that we think are crucial in order to be preserved. Um, I am a spring lover. I believe it's vitally important and so known a spring that has been damaged a couple of times. Um, I mean, it was an accident. It wasn't anything on purpose, but there has been a designation requested for <coughs> Nona Spring. And to me, that is the most vulnerable, and the history shows us it is the most vulnerable, uh, needing to be preserved. I am not advocating for all of the lots. I'm just advocating for that seven point whatever acres right around Nona Spring so that it is preserved. To me, that's number one. Uh, then to number two, I feel just about <laughs> as strong with the Spring Haven Drive. Uh, to me, that's number two. Uh, we had wanted to create that corridor between Myakahatchee Creek and Little Salt Springs and preserve that, why not ask Lock Money do it? They've got 18 million. I think that'd be a great investment for them to do, and it doesn't come out of our coffers. So to me, number two is Spring Haven. Then they have already stated that Constitution Drive was um, acceptable to them. I would make Constitution Drive the third one. When you get down into the neighborhood parkland program, there's three areas. One's on Chamberlain, one's on San Mateo, and one's on Kamsler. Those were submitted. They were pulled off. We put them back on. And frankly, guys, we have a reputation of doing that with the county. Mm -hmm. And it's uneasy what they have to deal with with us. So I went back and I looked at the history of these various lots. Some of them were just because we wanted a neighborhood park. Well, this commission has shown that they care about the neighborhood parks and want to proceed with that. But again, I think these preservation through the s lock submissions are more important than trying to establish the neighborhood park. But there are some of them that link across the canals and stuff, opening up more of a um, and regional type of thing, and one of them with Atwater Park. So in those three areas that we have told the county that we want back on the list, out of those three, I would put San Mateo Drive as one, Kamsler, which is out toward the estates, is two, and then three would be North Chamberlain. And everything else we have discussed as to whether we feel it should be on here or not. All right, Commissioner McDowell, you're up, please. Um, thank you, Mayor. Somewhere along the conversation, you said that one of the criteria is that we have a willing seller. And if spring, how do we know we have willing sellers? Or do we not? You don't. Um, so these nominations will go back with the priority to the representing boards. Those boards will review the um, priority list, review potential work plans as to how the Properties will be managed or developed um, for parkland if there's any development associated with it. Then they'll go out and start to work with the sellers. Sometimes these parcels wait for a long time for there to be a willing seller um, due to economy or what happens with the seller. So uh, the, the information you provide will help guide actions, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be able to successfully acquire this land. So using the list that uh, Mayor Luke had provided, and we'll pick on San Mateo. So she, she had suggested San Mateo be number one. Now, if the commission agrees with San Mateo being number one and the 
county then goes to San Mateo property owner and says, hey, we'd like to buy your property. And San Mateo property owner says no. Does that mean then that they will try number two and make that number one? And I have a hard time speaking for the board. Uh, however, they're going to be looking at the priorities from not just North Fork, but exactly. the city of Sarasota, Venice, um, and unincorporated areas. They're going to rank those together. They're taking our information to help them rank them. So um, what we provide doesn't mean that um, if we say San Mateo is our most important one when it goes to the board, um, for, for them, their advisory boards to look at, they may have a few others that edge that out. And then they're going to kind of work down <clears> the list. Okay, thank you for that. I, I needed to understand the process, so thank you. Um, Mayor, and I agree 100% with Nona Springs. Um, we need to start getting action on that spring to have it be uh, re preserved. So that also would be my number one. Um, I have to ask the tier one and tier two lots for my Akahatchee Creek. You didn't mention any of that. Was there a reason you didn't mention tier no, one? No, because that two? under the, and I apologize, I noticed that I was circling things and <laughs> circled right through it. So it looked <laughs> like there was a line through it and I wasn't even reading it. But to me, those number three priorities come even before the green white, personally, myself. Thank you for that clarification. Yes. Um, so if I was to give my order of importance is one is Nona, Nona Springs, uh, number number two is Constitution, number three would be um, the tier one, tier two, <coughs> and then four would be Springhaven only because we, we already have determined that the seller is not interested because we had tried to purchase them ourselves. So that's the only reason why I'm putting. May I speak to that? Sure. Uh, and they took it off the market because we were not willing to pay what they wanted. I don't know what S. Lock is willing to pay. Well, that's a great question. Is S. Lock um, capped at property values? You know, like if, let's say the property is valued at a hundred thousand dollars. They cannot go above and beyond that. Is there a cap for them? I will have to double check. I do believe it's market value, but I will have to double check. That. Okay. I'm going to, for the time being, I'm going to keep Spring Haven as my fourth. And then going down to the parks, um, and and I like our goals to have those pocket parks, but I do agree that San Mateo, because of the connectivity to Atwater, would make a, a much more enticing kind of park, in my opinion. So I, I agree with number one on that for San Mateo. Um, number two would be Chamberlain, and then number three would be the uh, tier one, tier two, and then four would be Casmo. Casler, only because of its close proximity to the Mayakahatchee Creek. That was the only reason why I, I kind of put it down towards the bottom of the list. So thank you, Mayor. Hey, Commissioner White. Yes. Um, Commissioner Luke, I like your, your choices there. I, I have no, no um, argument about that at all. Uh, I don't think really the order means anything. It would make a difference, but I know Nona Springs has been talked about for quite some time from people who are very passionate about that. So it needs to be on there. And the same thing with the Constitution area because of the scrub jay habitat that's been talked about. Um, and then I know Springhaven, too, is that corridor has been out there. So I think it would really be valuable to put those on, on the list and acquire those for uh, the environmentally sensitive land um, program. As far as parkland, uh, I'm going to advocate for Kampfler. I'm familiar with this, this track um, because of where it's situated. It's a, it's a beautiful pine flatwoods parcel. It, and that's what we have here in Northport. We're a pine flatwoods, which unfortunately is very quickly disappearing. So to have something like this, it would almost be like our own central park, to so to speak, to show people what used to be here. But, and I hate to say that, but it is a, a beautiful example. Plus, if you look at uh, where it is on the east side, it's right along the canal there. And uh, I know that, you know, years ago um, when uh, this was actually, I actually nominated this years and years ago too, but 
the city already had. <laughs> I didn't realize that, that, that you put the nomination in. Um, for what the reasons that are on the application, equestrian and being a trailhead, and also to think about that when we're going to be bringing that connector in here, um, for the Legacy Trail, we're always thinking about it coming from north to south. But here is a, a way that we're going to have something from, from us that people who live here can just go here and it could be a trailhead and that could be where they start and then, you know, take, take uh, Tropicare over and eventually hook up to the um, Legacy Trail rather than always thinking about bringing people down here. This would be something wonderful to start here. And, and have people then go north, because I think we deserve to have our own trailhead here, and this would be a perfect location for that. Um, remember, 69% of the people surveyed said that they would like to see us acquire and protect land, and I think this is what they're talking about, have land to enjoy and um, uh, for themselves. And plus, this also opens up the opportunities for partnerships. I know up in Sarasota, the celery fields, they, the county partnered with the Audubon Society. And we have conservation groups and environmental groups here in, in the city. And, and I think they would love to be able to have a place to talk about gopher tortoises and scrub jays and, um, and our, our cyclists. We have a really big cycling community here. So I think it has a lot of... Um, Opportunities, and that's really the the only one I'm going to advocate for. I mean, they're all they're all good. I, I like San Mateo as well that you mentioned. I don't think there's there's. I'm just not a big favor of the the tiers for the the creek because my understanding is that has its own funding source. We have funding for that um, mm -hmm. to a certain extent, and uh, is that right? Right. Can I speak to that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's starting city to manager. Or I know it's starting <laughs> to dwindle, but we've had it. So at least that gave us something. Whereas these other properties, there's nothing. We have nothing to buy these other properties with. And, and I absolutely agree. This is um, county money that we all pay into, and we need to get some of that down here and, and use it for, for our own. Can city manager tell us how much is in for the Mayakahatchee Tier 1, Tier 2? I don't know about Mount, but what I can say is that we have tried to go after county funding in the past, and it hasn't come up very successful. I don't care if you've got something you would like to add to that. Yes, Commission Carrie Branco, Assistant City Manager. Um, I want to say just off the top of my head, a couple hundred thousand dollars left. It was after we bought the parcel on Jessamy, and then we had a I get that exact number for you, but that's where we're at. And then the commission had given staff direction to prioritize purchasing only vacant lots with that remaining money. Thank right. you, ma'am. Yeah, and I know part of that, that problem is, again, you talked about willing sellers that people didn't want to, because we actually had somebody that we were paying to acquire, to help negotiate, correct? And we were only willing to give them the market value, and they wanted much more than that. So, again, that could always be a, a, a standoff that we're never going to see come to fruition. So that's the only reason why I, I, I would rather see those other three um, that Commissioner Luke um, mentioned be high priority, and then the others uh, you can throw in there. But as far as parkland acquisition, I just really would like to see the council track acquired. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor, you have the floor. Yeah, I had uh, my list all ready to go here. Um, I had Nona as number one, Constitution as number two. I had the tiers at the Mayak Creek as number three. And then Springhaver and, and that's number four because we don't even know if they're for sale or not or whatever the case may be. So I put that at the bottom of the list, maybe even to just take it off the list if we had a, a consensus going with the top three. I don't know how many we're going to give to them to look at, but I had them in the uh, SLOP. And then uh, the parks, I had San Mateo. Kamsler, and then North Chamberlain. So I was pretty much spot on the same with what you had and uh, Commissioner White and, and, and everybody else. So I think just basically we come up with a priority and let them know what we're seriously interested in and, and maybe not overburden them with 500 different areas and just key it down to a few of each. You know, that's just my two cents. All right, thank you for your two cents. <laughs> You want change? <laughs> <laughs> it was short enough. I can give you a little back. Uh, Commissioner Langdon. 
I think we're circling an agreement here. <laughs> um, in terms of environmentally sensitive, NONA was the top of my list. Constitution Drive was second. Tier one and tier two are uh, a third. And again, I put Spring Haven, although I'd love to have that at the top of the list. My understanding is we have relationships there and um, there's not been a real willingness to sell. And so I'd hate to have the county select that and then have it fall apart because we have an unwilling seller. Under parks, I, I have to say I'm really torn. I had San Mateo at the top of my list um, primarily because the speed at which the eastern end of the city is being developed is frightening. Um, but boy, I have to say, Commissioner White kind of sold me <laughs> on Kamsler. So that's a jump ball for me. And then um, North Chamberlain would be my third. What about the uh, Tier 1 and Tier 2? And I, I didn't, know tier I didn't one, have them. You didn't have I know. And tier 1 and Tier 2 are in both of them. Yeah. And I don't know. I guess somebody has submitted them under both. So... Um, I looked at them really only under the S lot, basically. I didn't even address them for the parkland. Um, so Yeah, I did the yeah. same thing. If it's environmentally sensitive, it's environmentally sensitive. It's a long exactly. the first. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner McDowell, please go ahead. So um, uh, Vice Mayor brought up a great point. Is it better to have two or three focused ones or have a longer list so that if one falls off, and or maybe they like another one that we have more on the bottom, how? My recommendation what's the would strategy? be to prioritize yep. all of these, knowing all of that some came in from citizens as well, and and it would be um, it would be good for us to say where those citizen nominations fall within there, and then as they go through, we can add additional notes as far as um, beyond. Okay, this is maybe not our top priority, and here's some concerns for them to keep in mind too as they look in the whole county. Thank you. And as far as the Mayakahatchee Creek Environmental Park, I really can't rank it at this point because of the conversation. It's we're not in there. It was in there, yes ma'am. Where? My understanding a citizen nominated the environmental yes. um, park as a as, as luck. Uh, if that was something that was just done, uh, it is not on this list. It's on the map, and it is in the list, ma'am. I'm sorry. I do believe it was on the... Not what I have from the letter of February 18th, the, uh, where the county is requesting things of us. We did add it to the staff summary. I apologize. If it wasn't on the um, administrator letter, but it was added to the staff summary as something to evaluate. It did come in after that, that letter, but since we were having the conversation... We wanted all the pending parcels to be prioritized. All right, th this, um, there's no other lights on. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and speak to this. Um, and this is why I asked for it to be put on the agenda later. SLOC monies come from taxpayer payers paying into that fund to preserve land. The environmental park is already preserved. So why are we using preservation money to throw it over to preserve something that's already preserved, and then you're going to be able to use that money that went into it as a general fund? I have a problem with that. I have an ethical problem doing that. So for a nomination to try to get SLOC money to purchase the environmental park when it's already preserved because of the... Mm -hmm conveyance of the contract of the grant to purchase it. Um, I have a problem with it. And just for clarification, that nomination came through from a resident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I still have a problem with it. I don't, I don't care who submitted it. <laughs> I have a problem with with using SLOC money to purchase something that's already preserved. Now, kind of some of the reasoning that I believe Commissioner Langdon talked about along the Myakahatchee Creek. Um, Yes, I'd love to buy all the land and, and it be to totally preserved, but to me it's a little tricky. It's kind of like that Sadowski fun thing. <laughs> so, and you'll hear me say this again probably in when we bring up 
in the next meeting this topic. But um, all right, if it's on there and staff wanted us to uh, address that, um, let's discuss that one. I'm not in favor of using any funds for an environmental park, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner White. No, I agree. Vice Mayor? No. Commissioner Langdon? I agree. I would. All right, so um, I would say that we do not support uh, the purchase of the environmental park uh, in the same manner that we do not desire to have commercial property on the list either. Mayor, um, I've been keeping track of everybody's first, second, and third choices. If you would I like. I figured you were. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, if you would like, we could get consensus based on where what I've got written down here. And Okay. Uh, and because this letter, and I'm going to pose this question to you, City Manager, because the county administrator divided these different two different entities apart, shall we prioritize the ones in the first one, SLOC, and then in the second one, the way that he did it? Yes, I would sub, uh, subcategorize them like they, like they have, yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner McDowell, uh, before you do that, we do have one public comment from awesome. Lowry Reed. If we'll have Lowry come speak, and then we'll go ahead and Look at your list, okay? Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, my dad was a Methodist minister, and I'm sort of reminded, uh, reminded of him sometimes saying, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> um, and uh, well, I'm reminded of that now, and as of one of a group of people who came with to propose the Spring Haven Drive issue to you and to see your overall response over the period of time has been uh, very affirmative. And I would thank you, and I thank all of you and the staff for all of the work that you have been doing. I would like to just emphasize a perspective and uh, an implied duty uh, in that uh, of, of, uh, of Northport. Northport was uh, originally you know, a, a, a plotted community. How, however, we are unique in, in, a, in a particularly strong way. And I, I wanted to use as an example this edition of the Florida Anthropologist. It's published by the Florida Anthropologi Anthropological Society, and it's the March uh, 19 edition. And there are two articles, Paleo-Neolithic Botanical Analysis of Bulk Sediment in in situ Collections from the North Slope Basin of Little Salt Spring, Sarasota County. And the second article was uh, Radiocarbon Dating from Warm Mineral Springs, Little Salt Springs, and nearby sites in Northport. Um, and on the front cover of this, there is Little Salt Spring, Warm Mineral Spring, and Nona. Mm -hmm. And Interesting. Nona is important, and it has no protection. So I wanted to emphasize that. I think we as, as a, we have a duty here. I mean, uh, People seven, eight thousand years ago thought Northport area, obviously, with these three sites, were important. They lived here, they died here, they buried their, their loved ones here. We need to make sure that we honor that. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, you are preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. So that finalizes the um, public Mayor, comment on no, this. We have online. Oh, you do have an online. Thank you so very much. Please go ahead. It's Laura Ross, 
Good afternoon, commissioners. The Northport Natural Corridor has been a topic of pursuit, which has ended up with myself and my children being invested in seeing this to fruition. We have made numerous appearances before you to voice our, ed to voice our educated opinion on the importance of this natural corridor for our local wildlife. Our last update regarding establishing the corridor was the fact that negotiations were being halted due to indifferences between pricing for the remaining properties. Moving forward with submitting the properties to Sarasota County as part of the Environmental Sensitive Land Protection Program is a huge step forward as we are all in support of this decision. It is extremely vital that these properties are established for conservation and preservation. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. All right, so does that finalize the public comment, clerk? Yes. Thank you very much. All right, uh, we will go over to Commissioner McDowell, and let's break these down the same way the letter that the county administrator gave us. So we'll start with the Environmentally Sensitive Lands Protection Program, as Thank, Thank you, Mayor. Before we talk about Nona Springs, because that one, hands down, is the first um, top priority, um, you had made mention, and I see on this map, there's a large solid purple with a few little lots around it. If you could bring that map up, it probably would be easier than me trying to describe it <laughs> for Nona. Yeah. All right. So we have this large property, this single property, and then the little ones around it. But then there's like a little tail. Um, are, are you... Are you when you made the comment, Mayor, that you didn't think all of them needed to be preserved, is that the tail part of it? No, ma'am. I am talking about, if you'll slide it down just a little bit further so that you show the, and go ahead back to the previous slide because you see the designation of the, of the borders. See the large area in the center? Mm -hmm. I believe that's seven point some acres. Okay. That is the one that I am proposing to put forward. Okay. At some later point in time, maybe you want to pick up some of those lots. I mean, the county does own, well, they did, at least they may have sold them. But um, that, to me, can be some future exploration. But to me, getting Nona Spring preserved, that needs to be. That's yeah. what I think. Thought you were alluding to, but I wanted to have a more in depth conversation. I, I don't want all the money spent on the tail and everything else, as okay. you say, when we've got these other priorities. I would like to see enough to keep that one preserved and then use money other places within the city. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, just for edification, what are the what is the significance of these two red ones? Oh, thank you. All right, so Mayor, can we get a consensus to have Nona Spring be the very first priority, that seven acre parcel, the solid parcel, be our first priority for the ESLPP? Okay, go ahead, Commissioner McDowell. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. I'm a yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay, Nona is number one under SLAP. So number two by by popularity based on conversation was uh, Constitution Drive. Um, the only person that I heard that said it should be number three was you, Mayor, um, but everybody else seemed to think that Constitution Drive should be number two. So I make, can we get a consensus to have Constitution be number two? Okay, uh, Commissioner McDowell. Yes. 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 Okay, so Constitution is number two under S lab. All right, so then you go to number three, which is, this is where it kind of gets a little bit dicey. Number three, um, by majority, is tier one, tier two. Um, Mayor did not comment. I'm not 100% sure where Commissioner White is. So because it's got three number threes, um, I'd like to get a consensus to have tier one, tier two along the Mayakahatchee Creek be number three on that priority list. Hey, I want to discuss this one sure. before we get the third one because I believe there's been more of a, major a majority that has said that using these SLOC funds over four of those, uh, that area is maybe not as high a priority as what some of the other areas such as Spring Haven would be. Spring Haven came in at number four for three of us, and you had it as number two for Spring Haven. 
everybody. Um, but we've, with the more discussion that we've right. had, there's been more May of a consensus. Changed. Exactly, it's been more of a consensus that those tiers aren't as important as what some of the other properties are. So, Commissioner Langdon, how do you feel about the tier ones versus uh, the other properties? Um, I think the other properties have priority. Vice Mayor? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm still with Creek. Okay, I feel the other properties take a priority over the tiers. Commissioner White? Yeah, um, I'd like to see Spring Haven in there. Okay, and Commissioner McDowell? Um, I uh, my my three and four are just right there together. So okay. I, I I will then get a consensus mayor to have Springhaven properties for the wildlife corridor be our third choice in the order of priority. Okay, Commissioner McDowell. Yes. 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 And then number four would be the tier one, tier two, for consensus mayor. Are you a yes? I am. Commissioner White. Yes. I'm a yes. 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 And we do have one last one that we did not discuss, but based on the advice from city manager and staff to list them all, the scrubby flatwood would be number five on the list. And I'm a yes. Uh, I don't know. Because they did not, I mean, we just discussed the, the submission of the environmental park. Uh, and made a determination of something that came after this letter, and it was after this letter was sent out that they rejected the scrubby flat area. So I don't know as we even need to prioritize okay. the scrubby flats because they have already taken it off of their list. Oh, yeah, they, that's right. They have that's right. That recommended to right. The I forgot about that. Thank you so much. Thank okay, for, go ahead and continue to Okay, the, so now going down to parks. Resoundingly, number one is San Mateo. Can we get a consensus to put that on the priority list for number one? Commissioner McDowell. Yes. Commissioner White. <laughs> it's a jump ball. <laughs> it is. It really is. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. I'm a yes, Commissioner, or Vice Mayor? Yes. And yes. Okay. We have number one for the Parklands being San Mateo. All right. Number two would be Casmore. Cas Kamsler. Um, I was the only one that made it on the bottom of the list, but uh, majority had it for the number two. So I'll get a consensus to have it as number two for Kamsler. Commissioner McDowell? Yes. Commissioner yes. White? I mean, yes. 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 Okay. All right. And then number three... Um, had three votes for Chamberlain to be number three. Um, the only one that seemed to kind of be an outlier, I think, was Commissioner, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor, and I'm sorry, Commissioner Langdon, I didn't quite hear where you were with Chamberlain. So I'll get a consensus to have Chamberlain be number three. Uh, Commissioner McDowell. Yes. Commissioner White. Well, there's, there's two on there. I'm sorry, I'm not, there's two on Chamberlain. So are we talking about... Uh, I'm only no. seeing North Chamberlain. Yeah, the, this one for Snover and Chamberlain, I'm not too sure where that came from. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. City Manager, does your staff have clarity as to why there are two of them on Chamberlain? I'm going to ask if uh, Ms. Wisner knows. Thank you. I think one was an old one. I would have to double check on that. We don't know. We'll so have to look into it. At this um, point, I'll get the Southern yeah, Chamberlain um, and Allegheny area and Squaw as number three. Well, that is not what's in the letter. It's North Chamberlain that's in the letter. Oh, yeah. Well, so I thought it was North South Chamberlain. Chamberlain. No, it's North Chamberlain that's right. in the letter that they wanted us to prioritize. So I'm going to get, ask for a consensus to put North Chamberlain in as number three. Uh, Commissioner Langdon? Yes. Yes. I'm a yes. Commissioner White? Yes. And Commissioner McDowell? Okay, well then I, 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 I'm a yes, but I, I do want to get some clarification because the past was South Chamberlain that was approved. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm just wondering if maybe that's a typo. 
looks like they were both submitted in 2009. I'm not as, sure as why. As one? No, they're completely separate mm -hmm. parcels. Um, they were both submitted by the city in 2009, according to our map. I'm not sure why the South Chamber one is not on the administrator letter. City Manager, can we get some clarity as to which ones the county administrator was talking about through his uh, slot committee? It does. Uh, as to whether it was north, south, the or letter north? was specific about north. That's Correct. North. Okay, so okay, so we'll just go with the north. Three, but just we north. need to question whether the 2009 submission of South Chamberlain we can inquire. was supposed to be active. I would say it's probably not active if it's not on this letter. We'll inquire. Yeah. Is that all right with the commission that yeah. we look into why South Chamberlain wasn't on? Okay, thank you very much. So um, number four would then be tier one, tier two along the creek for the fourth um, nomination. Okay, Commissioner McDowell? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. I'm a yes. Vice yeah. Mayor? Yes. And then just for kicks and giggles, do you want to put the South Chamberlain as number five? Uh, no, because that was not listed. I don't want to cause any confusion. There has to be a true, um, and for, for some reason, I think it was pulled in between some of the you know, of what I've read, I'm thinking that it was it pulled does back. It look like that might have pulled, been pulled from the list at one point in time. So yes. we will double check it. But South, South Chamberlain was so, not included in this batch. With the, with the background of what I have been taking in lately, I think it was pulled. But we have also the Panacea Boulevard DRI for a conservation easement uh, submission, and that is through the S. Yes, lap. Um, so do we want a consensus to add that as number five to our s lock submissions? Commissioner McDowell. No. Which one was that? I'm sorry. That is the submission by a citizen for the Panacea uh, area in the DRI. Oh. For the concert, well, they didn't clarify, but that's what they were trying to achieve. Um, we do you want a, that as number five? We got a consensus earlier not yeah. to include the DRI stuff. That's why I said no. Uh, DRI was not commercial. We we made the uh, it to be only with commercial. So there was the activity center, which could be commercial, that we said no outright. We right. did that at the very beginning, and then we talked about how the DRI is part of that activity center and then the DRI part, which is mostly residential, and we got a consensus earlier in the meeting to not include the DR, the rest of the DRI for fantasy and plantation to be included. Excluded. No. Uh, to be excluded. excluded. Yeah. To be excluded. Uh, city clerk, it did is. we exclude yes. parcels yes. from DRIs in submission lists? What I have, the three consensus that I have is there was consensus to not prioritize properties that are designated commercial within activity centers or neighborhood commercial. There was consensus to not consider properties that are designated commercial within activity centers or neighborhood commercial for future nominations. And there was consensus not to exclude the Woodlands DRI from future nominations. Correct. Not exclude That's the them. way I remember. So his submission is active. We did not just kick out that and, submission. Right. And I'm I'm not in favor of putting it on the list at this time because it's nowhere close to development. And you know, they, they have a DRI going forward that okay. could be developed. And that's okay. No at problem. this time I, I'd like to I am more in favor of focusing on the ones that we've already had as priorities in the past. Right. Uh, Commissioner White, where are you with the consensus for the DRI property. Uh, so we're not, we had already said we were not going, we were included for future. You would so not exclude the DRIs for exclude. future nominations. We already made a consensus right. on that. So what are you asking for now? Do you want that as listed, that property listed as number five oh. on the S lock list? Um, right. No. I'm going to see where everybody stands. 
How do you feel? No. No? Vice Mayor? I'm a no. I'm, I'm just uncertain because of those entitlements. Um, I don't know if that would add a complication to implementing an easement, and I would hate to put something on the list for the county that was encumbered in, in some way. So I think until we clarify that, I would not be in favor of prioritizing it. Okay, and that makes total sense to me. So what we just did was undid our... No, 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 no. We, no, right. All right, so we uh, we're, we have to state something in this priority because they have sent to us that there was a nomination by a citizen for this piece of property. Are we telling them that we do not want it prioritized? It didn't make okay. it top five. Just, just eliminate? It's, just not, it's not being eliminated. We are not including it as a priority. Right. Okay. We do That's not, the way we do not view it. it as a priority. Right. Citizens can okay. still nominate on their own. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. But they're wanting us to prioritize what the citizens have done. I mean, we can't just have them submit, according to what I've read, submit and then we not respond to it as a city. So our response to that is going to be we do not desire this to be prioritized. Vice Mayor, did you want to say something? Well, I'm just saying it's at the bottom of the list regardless whether it's on the list or not on the list. So if we're going to move forward, might as well just put it on the list at the bottom row. You know, seriously, if, if that's what we're needing to do, we need to listen to our citizens if they have put that forward. And it's still at the bottom of the list. It would be prioritized as X compared to A. So I, I don't see no harm in it moving forward and putting it on the list. Commissioner McDowell. Um, I view this as something similar to Nona Springs. Nona Springs, the citizen had included, I don't know, 20 other parcels, mm -hmm. including the tail. And we prioritize the seven acres, not those surrounding parcels. So if the, the committee says, hey, we want to include all of it, they are able to do that. That's the way I'm looking at those DRI parcels, very similar to the Nona Springs ones. How I feel about this of making it number five is it is the lowest one. We are acknowledging that uh, the citizen made this suggestion. Trust me, they're going to, as a board up there, they're going to find it cumbersome to try to get involved in a DRI they are going to end up rejecting this. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't mind because it was submitted by a citizen making it the lowest on the totem pole and allowing them then to decide because it will be so cumbersome for them. That's a good point. All right. Um, but if we recognize it's going to be cumbersome, why would we even want them to spend the time going through it and including it as even a review? Because the citizen still right. nominated it. I, I, I totally understand that the citizen also nominated a citizen also nominated the um, activity centers and they also nominated a commercial property and we outright said no. So we're not saying no, we're also not saying yes. We're just leaving it where it is. Okay, um, there is not going to be a unanimous consensus, so I will entertain a motion as to what to do with the property on Panacea Boulevard that has been submitted by a citizen. Is there a motion? Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Yeah, I'll move to approve that uh, property. Um, what was the name of it again? The uh, uh, Panacea Boulevard. Panacea Boulevard for consideration yeah, right. as number five on our list. I'll second. There is a motion on the floor by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner White to put the Panacea Boulevard as number five on the list for s Lock. Anything to that, either of you, Vice Mayor? I don't think it's going to hurt anything. OK. Um, go ahead and take the vote.
And that passes three to two. Can I speak as to why I said no? Of course you can. Earlier in the, at the beginning of the conversation, you had mentioned about how the county and we change our mind and stuff like that. I, I just want them to focus on things that we know can happen. And since we recognize this as a DRI and there's already that, in, that roadblock, I don't want them to focus on their time on something like that. That's the reason why I dissented. Thank you. Commissioner Langdon. Yeah, my feeling is exactly the same. Okay. Uh, I will admit that I am torn, but I think that can be articulated and more than likely their department is watching this meeting. <laughs> if not, I'm sure our staff is going to articulate that. But um, because we took the consensus to not exclude DRIs, that residential area of DRIs, I could not cast this one out personally in good conscience out of respect for the citizen who nominated. So, uh, Commissioner White, your light is on. Oh, it is, I'm sorry. Well, I, I did have a question though. Is that okay? Sure. Um, so where we stand is North Chamberlain is is okay. We're not sure about South Chamberlain, if that it even belongs in here. It does correct? not belong here. We're, we're already, that They're going to come back and let us know what happened to South Chamberlain okay. in the past. Okay. No, I don't think they're ready. Do okay, you have thanks. an answer? Or? Yeah, talk about South Chamberlain. Oh, great. So this is time perfect timing. <laughs> I was looking for my map. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So, okay. Uh, Carrie Brink again, Assistant City Manager. So what I found was a memo written uh, December 30th, 2019 for myself to the uh, City Manager earlier, and it was updating on the nomination for the properties. And so originally when the EAB board met in September 5th of 2019 with the commission, the Chamberlain property was nominated. Uh, subsequently, which which one north or it south? It just said Chamberlain, so I think we put both north and south. Mm -hmm. So just said, so we had included both, or EAB did, I should say, and we agreed. So since then, uh, planning reviewed the properties and took a closer look and said that the property nominated located on South Chamberlain between Squaw Land and Allegheny Lane is zoned neighborhood commercial. Uh, and they had requested right. that this property not be nominated since there's a shortage of neighborhood commercial property in the city. That's so after right. consideration with the city manager, uh, that's when we pulled it in the backup okay. and um, just included the north versus south. Thank you very much for finding that. It's greatly appreciated, uh, Assistant City Manager. Mayor, do you need a motion to capture all these consensuses? I do. Fantastic. Uh, uh, city manager's light is on first, though, please, and then we'll take the motion. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it was just to give uh, 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 assistant city manager an opportunity to speak. Thank you for listening to her. All right, go ahead. Uh, Commissioner McDowell, floor is yours. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to um, capture our consensuses for the record and get an official vote. Um, we'll start with the ESLPP. Uh, to have I, I think if you just state the consensus is because we had a consensus on all of them I think would be fine instead of running through it again your choice is that all right please you, your choice I'll make a motion to um, approve the ESLPP and the parks nomination list as provided through consensus is given um, during this discussion thank you there's a motion on the floor by Commissioner McDowell to uh, Submit the prioritization list to the county through the consensus that were made during this discussion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Langdon. Commissioner McDowell, your light's on. I just want to thank staff and especially our citizens who took the time to nominate some parcels, and I hope they do understand our reasoning for outright rejecting a few of those nominations. But I do appreciate their time. Thank you. Commissioner Langdon, anything to the motion? Uh, no, nothing. Okay, let's go ahead and vote. And that passes five to zero. Uh, staff, thank you very much and look forward to hearing the next step in this journey. All right, we are on to 21-0516. 
discussion and possible action regarding giving city manager discretion to allow acceptance of special event applications up to 30 days prior to the event. City manager? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, Mayor, I believe this is an agenda item that you requested. It, it was. Yes, Thank you, sir. Uh, we have had discussion and it is being brought back in an ordinance to, to shorten it from 60 to 30 days. And we have encountered some of the special events coming in at a timeline. So I was wondering uh, if we could get the ability for the city manager to approve those up to that 30 day mark instead of making it go to the 60 day mark until that ordinance comes back. Commissioner McDowell, your light's on. Um, I think this is just a technicality and splitting hairs, but I want to bring it up because to me, when you say up to 30 days, that means I, as a nonprofit, can come into city manager tomorrow and give him an application for him to approve. I thought we were looking at at least 30 days prior to the event. This is saying up to 30 days, so he can approve events from day one to day 30. Thank you for that correction. That's what I was trying to say, and I didn't get it articulated so properly. What, what I, so are you asking was, for at least 30 days prior to the event? Shortening from the 30, excuse me, shortening from the 60 to the 30 day notice. Yes. Okay. Yes. I am all in favor of that, but the up to 30 days, no way. Because <laughs> okay. staff has to have time to review. I said it one way, and then I said it a different way, so thank you. Uh, Commissioner White, your light is on. Yeah, um, I was wondering about that too, because I think at one time it was 90 days, and then 60 days, and sometimes that is, that's even difficult to get all your ducks in a row in, in 60 days. But 30 days, definitely. My only concern is if they're applying for the grant program, that has to come before the commission. And I know, I think even for that event that was listed, the, the, the car event, it was approved after the fact. I don't know if that makes a difference, because it's up to them if they're going to get the City manager, the grant go ahead. Money to pay for the rental or not? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if thirty days is enough to get um, approval from you, y'all. But not every special event requests right mm -hmm. that money. So would that you know. come maybe with the understanding that if they if they or have it written somewhere that they may not? Like we need at least sixty days for the, the grant for the, for the grant or for the allocation mm -hmm. to give us time to get it on the agenda and get it from y'all. I see them as being two different things. City Attorney, your light is on. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to point out that this type of direction to deviate from the code while we have legislation pending should come back in the form of a resolution for commission consideration and approval. So if you were, the board were to want to move forward with this, that's what I would recommend as the next step. Thank you, ma'am. And I appreciate you giving that reminder. Commissioner McDowell, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, to me, this is an easy peasy kind of thing where you're taking a, a six zero and changing it to a three zero, meaning 60 days versus the 30 days. How long are we looking to bring forth a resolution, I mean, an a ordinance to change it? Um, I, I'll have to get back to you. I don't know right off the top of my head. Well, it's important. Okay. I'm sorry. We've got a lot of a lot of moving pieces these days. Because if you're if we have to prepare a resolution to do the same thing that the ordinance is going to do, wouldn't it just be easier to just approve the or to proceed with an ordinance? That's kind of where I'm going with it. Understandable question. It, it, I apologize. It is currently part of the ULDC rewrite, and um, you know that's up to could be up to anyway. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so the agreement that we made of changing it from the 60 to the 30 was to be done when the ULC, ULDC was completing. So it would behoove us, instead of waiting a year or so, um, to have this resolution that during the time that is being placed in the ULDC that he has the 30-day option instead of the 60-day. Commissioner so they're McDowell, not they're not preparing a special res, uh, a special ordinance to change it in the ULDC. It's going to wait for ULDC, and that's why we're going to do a resolution to grant you this authority. 
the resolution will grant the authority while we're while you're under this legislative review and, and change process on the ULDC. Okay, and then so it will it will be addressed as part of the ULDC process. So we're not going to be doing any ordinance specifically geared towards this 30, 60 day. If you also choose to go in this direction, then I, it wouldn't be my recommendation that we do a special okay. ordinance on the on the special events. No. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there any public comment? No, there's not. Thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion there. Thank you. I'll make a motion to direct city manager to work with city attorney to draft a resolution to give the city manager authority to accept uh, special event uh, permit applications provided they are given to him at least 30 days prior to the event. I'll second that. Okay. There's been a motion on the floor by Commissioner McDowell, seconded by Commissioner White. Uh, City Clerk, I'm going to ask you to read that back because it does differ just differently than how it's written in this title. Thank you. To direct the city manager and city to work with the city attorney to draft a resolution giving the city manager the ability to approve special event permit applications that are received at least 30 days prior to the event. Okay, anything to that? Nope. As Any long as they, as long as the applications have to be submitted and the city manager can take them 30 days prior to the event, not 28 days prior to the event, not five days prior to the event, but 30 day, 31 day, and so on. Correct. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner White, anything? No. All right. And before I call on the city manager, just to articulate again, this is talking about the applications for a special event, not special event assistance. City manager, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. I just want to make sure that uh, uh, the city manager or his or her designee. Okay. The city manager has the authority to delegate that okay, to us. Okay, good. Great. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and vote. And that passes 5 to 0. Thank you very much. We are on to 21-0359. Uh, discussion and possible action regarding the Mayaka River Management Coordinating Council's request for the City Commission to ad adopt a resolution identifying more mineral springs and little salt springs as a high priority for Northport's local legislative delegation. Uh, I'm not going to call on the city manager because it's just going to come back to me. Uh, I was on Miss Wong. I see you in the back. Uh, city manager Miss Wong. Uh, has worked with me with this, and she probably has some input. Could we um, Wong. have her? You can see yourself also? come down. Uh, Ms. Wong work, or is our representative to the Mayaka River Management Coordinating Council. And I was on a call, I mean, with the pandemic going on, we had all of this, all these onlines, and it was easy to jump on an online meeting and take in partial meetings and stuff. So. I did that one time and then got brought in on a topic. And I so agree with what they're saying, and not only them, but we had uh, somebody come from the county, you know, and present to us a, a resolution that their committee brought forward supporting this idea of having Little Salt Spring and Warm Mineral Springs designated as high priority springs. Pretty much they're the only springs that aren't named. And so we don't get the priority for grants the way the other ones would. We don't get the um, ability to have somebody come gauge everything and check everything the way all the other springs do. So this would really enhance the preservation and the care of the springs plus probably put us in that higher bracket to be able to receive funding. Uh, have I missed anything, Ms. Wong? 
Um, I think you've put it, Elizabeth Wong, stormwater manager for the record, you've put it very elegantly, Mayor. But what benefits do you see if the legislator, and this has to be done through our delegation, through our legislators, we have to submit this resolution to them. And I know the um, session is done at the end of this month, and that's why I pulled the one about home rule, because they're done in just a few days. But this is something that we can take to our delegation, to all of the legislators, and request that our springs be placed on this list also. So it, it doesn't matter when we do it. They wanted it done several months ago when session was you know, beginning, but it takes a while to get things to this dais. So we can bring this to our delegates at any point in time and prep for them and get our, our delegation team from our area to put this forward for us. Ms. Wong, go ahead. I think another advantage was, would be for, if it's in the list of Protect Us Springs, that they look at the uh, minimum flows for this spring, because as we all know, it has significantly deteriorated over time, the flow due to have heavy withdrawals from the, uh, the upper floor and aquifer. Um, and they do that at their expense. They do not charge <coughs> any of the entities anything for their, their oversight, correct? Right, and I think SWIFMA is the entity that typically looks at minimum flows. This is uh, the amount of flow out of the spring is not considered first magnitude springs. It's not the highest flowing spring. So it doesn't get that type of priority to look at. But um, by having it prioritized high, it probably would get on their radar a little sooner. All right. Thank you very much. Commissioner Langdon, you have the floor. Great. Thank you. Um, Ms. Wong, are there any restrictions, development restrictions around the springs if they have this designation? Um, of particular concern to me would be Little Salt, which is off Price Boulevard, which at some point in our future will need to be widened down that end of town. So if, we, if Little Salt is on that list, could there be any restrictions in development that might go on in proximity to it? I do not know the answer to that question. Mm, uh, I read if, all the stuff and I couldn't if answer I, if it. If I either. can answer, that's one of the things that I asked uh, Swift Mud in particular about that. Right. Uh, and I worked with John O'Miller on this also. Uh, and I was, because we own more mineral springs. The University right. of Miami owns Little Salt Spring. Right. So I'm like, is there any restriction would be given to us as the owner? And I was assured no, okay. uh, that there are other activities, um, recreational, ecological activities that go on at the other springs. They just go about watching the, the flow, watching the aquifer, what type of runoff may go into it, the protectiveness of just the spring, not the property, the spring. If, if and I have to add something to that. Sure. The protection of the springs starts well away from the springs. Mm -hmm. Right. It's right. the upper Florida aquifer, yep. which was over pumped all the way up in the Suwannee area. So um, Is definitely that we should protect the area around the springs from direct right. runoff. Right. But in terms of water flow and quality, because it taps into the upper Florida aquifer, which is quite down there. So the protection needs to come all the way up north. I mean, is that why our outflow in the springs is so reduced over the past yes. few decades? Because yes. of over tapping of the aquifer. If I can refer you to that report that's attached to the agenda, number three, the USGS. It was tough reading. It was very <laughs> tough. I read that three times. I'm sorry. Yeah. But she I'll like point you to the page. Oh, that has, okay. That has the most uh, information at one glance. And okay, great. Thank you. Page uh, 15. I can, I can suffer through <laughs> one page, I think. If you can turn with me to page 15, there's a lovely graph there. And that graph tells a lot of history. It's the figure 11. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, are we on there yet? Yes. Okay. So basically, it is showing over time how the flow has been affected. Reduced, yeah. Okay? And the the blue dots is the measured discharge from the springs over time from 1940 to 2020. And the, the little crosses, that is the um in that is the romp uh the Sarasota Nine Well, it's a monitoring well in the upper Florida and Africa. Shows how it has dropped over time. There's mm -hmm. a direct correlation right. between that, that and the flow. Now, in the so there was a lot of permits issued for pumping out of aquifer, uh, the Florida and aquifer, down to the 1970s when they started to cut back on it. So it kind of leveled off a little bit after 1970s. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yeah. Right. And I'm happy to report that. Um, uh, the USGS gauge that has been installed at our facility in uh, starting in 2018. I looked at that flow, and it's also attached to your your agenda item as number four. That has that shows um, variation over roughly three years, and it hasn't taken a huge plunge. It does go up mm -hmm. and down, mm -hmm. and I think some of it could be seasonal. Right? So it has sort of level off between. Oh, roughly uh, 6 to 10 CFS. But long-term monitoring is needed to see if it goes even further down. Right. So, again, there's no corrective action we need to take in terms of the springs itself. It's really upriver, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for that explanation. And, and may I add some about the water quality of the springs? Because I took a look at the water quality in the springs, the available data there see how it's affected and the um the primary focus is the nitrogen mm. the nitrite nitrite nitrate is not very high but ammonia seems a little higher than normal and i um i probably suspect it's because there's a lack of oxygen you have more of that ammonia form versus the nitrate form which has more oxygen form so it's good to keep an eye on that and the county has been um, monitoring that on a monthly basis, so I, I've looked up their data. So it's a little high for springs, the, uh, the ammonia, but the nitrate is very low, so that's good. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? I'm good. Right. Commissioner White. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is a great great thing to do, and I'm so glad that we we have a resident who who uh, sits on that. Um, committee, uh, Barbara Lockhart, it's so important that residents get involved so that they can advocate for for us. We have these two springs and and yet here's, you know, monies that are available to help us <coughs> protect it and uh, we weren't taking advantage of it because who, who knew? And <laughs> so I'm really glad that uh, this has come, come forward and to have people out there willing to speak out for it, for sure. All right. We have two public commenters on this one, um, Joan Heron San Luen and Juliet Jones. You'll, the mics are over here. If you'll state your name, ma'am. Good afternoon. My, na my name is Joan Heron San Luen. I've been a homeowner in Northport for over 20 years. For that same amount of time, I have been a strong enthusiast of War Mineral Springs. When offered, I had a year membership until COVID. Except for the past year of COVID, I have attended every meeting about War Mineral Springs of which I was aware. First, I want to thank this commission for their stewardship of the springs and maintaining environmentally safe aspects. One of the objectives of my speech is to ensure the commission realizes and appreciates the two springs beyond the well-known aspects. I've emailed a copy of this speech to all the commissioners. While I am a member of the board of the War Mineral Springs Little Salt Springs Archaeological <coughs> Society, and a member of the board of the Friends of Little Salt Springs, and a member of the Friends of War Mineral Springs, I'm speaking today on behalf of myself and not those organizations. I am here today to strongly encourage the commission to adopt a resolution for our two springs to be a high priority for Northport local legislative delegation, what well, it seems like you are, so I'm very pleased about that. First, uh, little Friends of Little Salt Springs 
was started by residents in 2012. Over the years, they have sponsored dozens of public workshops, demonstrations, and meetings regarding all aspects of Little Salt Springs, including the rare orchid that was discovered growing on the property in recent years. At meetings of the Friends that are free and open to the public, the development of the ongoing relationship with Selby Gardens was discussed. Folks at Selby are extremely interested in the rare orchid. The name and pictures of the orchid are on the Friends Facebook page. I'm not about to try and pronounce it. <laughs> now on to Warm Mineral Springs. Kurt Bowen, a well-known diver, created a website, warmmineral.com. It has a lot of pictures and over 25 scientific papers. He is the diver that took the picture in 2015 of the surface area from 154 feet below the surface, as shown on the front page of the USGS report attached to the agenda. I attended architectural lectures in Sarasota. It was there, I believe, that I learned that the length of the buildings is equal to the depth of the springs, which is about 210 feet. When you go into the water at 9 a.m., the water is so clear you can see your feet. By noon, the sun has caused the water to cloud up. By activity, by activating microbes in the water, the bottom is not muddy. It's not the people walking causes the cloudiness. To state the obvious, Warm Mineral Springs is not affected by red tide. It is a sanctuary for people, birds, and other animals. I am strongly against a public-private partnership. Nonprofits non are not private. Approach that never work out to the benefit of the public. Years ago, I did a lot of research, and it was appalling what negative aspects those types of partnerships have had in the Florida, particularly regarding bridges in Florida. <coughs> At home, I was three seconds short. Um, thank you for your time. Stay safe. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, I was going to allow you to finish because I know you're having problem with breathing, mm -hmm. and you were not able to speak at your normal. Yes, I can go much faster. But faster but I but you you're having a little problem with your breathing, yes. uh, and thank you for forwarding that to us so we have it completely. Ms. Jones, please go ahead. And I apologize if you wanted this to be in the general comment. I assumed that it was during this that you wanted to speak. Go ahead. This is good. Julia Jones, Warm and Most Springs, Durango Avenue. Uh, for the first time in, uh, ever, I saw two pro-environmental articles uh, relative to the preservation uh, and protection of Warm and Most Springs emphasizing that the commission should now move ahead with phase one. One was in the Sun and one was in the Herald, that no more time should be lost. Could this mean that, I think this is a breakthrough in public consciousness, could this mean that people have finally noticed that we have red algae, green, uh, I mean red tide, green algae, pollution, uh, that five times more manatees died this year than last year? due apparently to glyphosate poisoning. Uh, the horror and shame of what is happening to the environment and wildlife due to malignant interests and mismanagement and ignorance saddens me beyond measure. Humanity is just now beginning to experience what they have wrought upon the environment, yet Warm Mineral Springs still remains a sanctuary, free of these things. I'm appalled that at this time, that any incoming commissioner should come upon this diet, this, without having done their homework on the Warm Mineral Springs property, causing a tactical delay, which if pursued might serve to damage what has thus far been accomplished through the application of a tremendous amount of time, money, resources, planning, and overwhelming approval by the public. The current Warm Mineral Spring plan has been vetted and approved already including feedback and responses from the citizens and neighborhood. Move forward. The money to restore this, I understand, is coming from parks funding avenues as suggested by staff, not from ad valorem taxes or any other fund that would use other taxpayers or other departments' monies. And P3 partnerships could have been submitted at any point, but if not, there's no reason for further delay to see who might want to apply. This is an old hat delay tactic. And by the way, staff has stated previously that no P3 would take this on 
because of contracts on the facilities currently. Besides, as Jonas pointed out, they never work. They're always a mask for something else. Improving the conditions of the facilities through restoration preserves a heritage and historic le legacy for Northport. Not addressing this now will only cause more added expense in the future, and delay does the same thing, both, I expect, with an insidious motive. This is a typical Northport backward tactic. The insane mantra about lack of value of the, the springs, it's Northport's only iconic site. It's a magnet for tourists. May I finish? It's the last paragraph. Uh, I, I, no, I'm going to stop. Go me? ahead. Yes. Well, you yes, get please. it anyhow. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and again, uh, with the title that you had on the card, I thought it was referring to this item, or I would have had you come during okay. general comment if I realized I what the comment was it about. It doesn't matter to me. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, with the conclusion Mayor, of that. Mayor, we, we do have one online public comment. Okay, please go ahead. This is Laura Ross. Good afternoon, commissioners. We are in full support of agenda item 3C to establish both warm mineral springs and little salt springs as high priorities to add additional protection and management of these environmentally, historically, and archaeologically <laughs> sensitive sites. Thank you for your time and consideration. All right, thank you very much. With the conclusion of public comment, I'm going to open the floor for a motion. And um, I'm going to actually see if Commissioner White wants sure. to do this motion. I can do that. Thank you. I think I can do that. All right, I'll, I'll move to direct staff to draft a resolution to identify Warm and Old Springs and Little Salt Springs as high priority spring protection to be presented to Northport's legislative delegation. Second. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a motion on the floor by Commissioner White, seconded by Commissioner McDowell, uh, to direct staff to draft a resolution to identify Warm Mineral Springs and Little Salt Springs as high priority spring protection to be presented to the Northport's legislative delegation. Go ahead and vote. Well, I should say either of you have anything to say to that? All right, go ahead and vote. And that passes five to zero. So thank you very much, uh, Commission. And I will um, make the entities who had recommended that we do this resolution, make them aware. Um, Elizabeth sits on that one board. I'll make the other one aware of what we have done. And then um, we can get that resolution and move it forward to our delegation. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, we are on to our last item, which is 21-0453, discussion of possible action regarding the purchase of upgrades to the city's existing ABI, which is audiovisual system, and accommodate hybrid meetings in room 244. Um, city manager. I ask the city clerk to address this item. So, Commission provided direction on February 9th to um, prepare necessary policy revisions to allow for hybrid meetings. Um, upon reviewing all of the ways that we could accomplish this, uh, we determined that we would need additional upgrades in room 244 to be able to provide this to the advisory boards. IT has sought a, um, a what's it called? you know, to get how much it was going to cost and, um, yeah, an estimate. <laughs> and um, it was determined that it would be about $8,000 through that. They do have other means that they said that they could potentially accomplish it at a lower cost. Um, but neither department has funds within our budgets to accommodate it. So we would require a budget amendment. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, city manager, do you want to speak to that as far as she's mentioned a budget adjustment? Do you want to speak to that? Do you uh, have the funds that you could bring? The, we could find the funds if, okay. if you give direction on that. Uh, okay. yeah, $8,000 $8, won't make or break us. Okay. Uh, Commissioner McDowell, you have the floor. So I just want to get some clarification. Um, this is for allowing like a Zoom meeting to be held in 244 so that the people that are present can see the Zoomers online. Yeah, so wouldn't, I don't guarantee it was going to be Zoom, but it would be some media 
means to be able to view the other participants as long as we had a quorum present. Fantastic. Is that capability available here in chambers currently? Yes. So if we had uh, somebody who wanted to be a guest speaker, but they could only attend remotely, they could come in through the audio visual here? We can see if the meetings the in chambers, yes. Okay. It's the same way that IT connects them now when they attend virtually Fantastic. presenters. Um, and just so if we're looking for money, um, the commission has not been able to do a lot of travel this year. Um, we did give direction to do this. I think it would be only wise to take it out of our our budgets to get that upgraded. Um, we 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 have all the money in there that we could do this. Um, so that's my thought. I just wanted to make sure we had the Zoom capability or Teams capability here in Chambers. Hearing that we do, yes, I am in full support of 244 being upgraded accordingly. Okay, Commissioner White. Yeah, just to, to clarify that this could be for advisory boards, and but they physically, we would have to have a quorum physically in the room, but the other members who didn't make up the quorum can attend virtually, yes. Yes, okay. Which I think is a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll speak to only the money. I don't think the money needs to come out of commission. Um, monies. We have a $50,000 contingency fund in the um, commissioner's fund area. Um, I would rather see it come out of that instead of individual um, individual travel training and stuff like that. I don't think that blends as well as what a contingency fund would. And we have not spent anything out of that 50000 sitting in that contingency fund. But uh, I don't want to personally direct the city manager as to where to take the money from. I think that is his purview as to uh, where he thinks uh, he can come up with it from. And uh, I would leave it to him to do. I think the only decision we need to do is decide whether we want this upgrade so that we can have the hybrid meetings for our advisory boards. If there's nothing else, I entertain. Uh, well, I'll ask if there's comments. I would just say I agree with you, and if you're ready for a motion, I'll make it. Okay, let me see if there's public comment. Oh. There's not. Okay, go ahead, please, Commissioner Lang. I move to direct staff to draft a budget amendment to fund the necessary equipment for hybrid meetings in room 244. Second. All right, there is a motion on the floor by Commissioner Langdon, seconded by Vice Mayor, uh, to direct staff to draft a budget amendment to fund the necessary equipment for hybrid meetings in room 244. Uh, anything to that, either of you? No. Well, just one thing. They may want to be called Zoomies and not Zoomers. So Zoom I don't. We Zoomies? Just, Zoomies. <laughs> you know. Either just, one of them are funny. Just, <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead and take your vote, Zoomies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just grateful that we can I'm, have I'm the just hybrid. On Commissioner McDowell. All right, take so away there, that, that passes five to zero. So thank you very much. Uh, that actually ends this agenda, but I would like to see if the commission would indulge us to have our commission comments and stuff in this meeting so that we don't have to do it in the six o'clock meeting. Can I get a consensus to hear commission and charter administrative comments in this meeting? Can we do that even though it's not on the agenda? I think Oops. we've done it before. But yeah, well, that doesn't always mean it's right. <laughs> That's a precedent or case law. <laughs> That means a lot. Huh? Yeah, for Attorney. a no-no. <laughs> I mean, we did not did have commission communication in the last meeting because we went so long. And in all actuality, this is the continuation of that meeting, these items. <laughs> so actually, we the, it probably should have been placed on this agenda uh, because it was the continuation of that previous one. And we did not have the opportunity to be able to address those uh, items at the end of that. So again, um, 
city attorney, your light's on. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Is there no action items involved? I don't see any, any problem Thank you. from a legal standpoint. Mm -hmm. Action items. As there are no action items involved. These are just updates of what meetings you all uh, attended or something of the like from charter I'm bringing as up well. anything we're going to vote on, are you? Uh, I have one thing that I will bring up, but I will explain it now, and then if I have to uh, ask for it in the next meeting or in the 6 o'clock, but at least I don't have to go all the way through the, the discussion. So um, let's get a consensus to do our commission yes. and administrative. Thank you very much. Yes. 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 All right. Let's go ahead. Commissioner Langdon, we'll start with you. You know, it's funny, I have my notes in my office because I was thinking 6 o'clock, but I'll do my best to try to remember. Do you want to go get them? Your office is nah, right there. That's okay. I'll, I'll kind of go with it. Um, it was just a very busy community month. There was an awful lot going on in the community, and the, the three that really impressed me was I... Um, I was grateful to attend the Fire and Rescue Award ceremony. Thank you, uh, Chief Titus. It was a very uplifting and motivating event, and I really had a good time, so thank you very much for that. I was also part of the planting of a tree at St. Andrews, and now I'm not going to remember the names of all the organizations that were involved, but um, it was Rotary, North Port Forward, um, there was a, a rotary in um, uh, Ukraine who was actually the impetus of this worldwide movement to plant more trees. So that was just really a fun event. Several of us were there. Um, and I had an opportunity to go to the Twisted Fork for the first time. The Chamber of Commerce had their networking breakfast there. So I had a lot of fun hanging out at a biker bar, not my typical <laughs> venue. But, uh, you know, it's good to get out of the comfort zone from time to time and, and do different things. So, and those are the ones I remember. There were others. I just can't think what they were. Thank you for the time. Well, you went to Bunny Squad, too, didn't you? Oh, the Bunny Squad. You and your husband both did, didn't you? Oh, yeah. L leaving eggs, hiding eggs. Had about 15 homes. Was that this report cycle? Wow. Oh, we we didn't um, talk last time. We so. didn't. It's been about a month. Since yeah, we've done what this. a great event that was, organized by Parks and Rec, and I was so impressed. I had all my bags of eggs and then the golden eggs and a map, and I, even I couldn't get lost. So it was really <laughs> great um, hiding all of those eggs. Um, and I think I shared a couple of these stories with uh, fellow commissioners, but in a couple of locations, there would be screaming children because they spied me with my ears falling off, sort of at this rakish angle, because it was a windy day, and I'm planting eggs all over the property. So that was just really a lot of fun for me. Many thanks to Parks and Rec for, number one, inviting me to do that, and then having it so wonderfully organized that even I couldn't mess it up. I'm not the best with logistics. So thank you all for that. All right, thank you. Vice Mayor. Yeah, I made it to the Twisted Fork, too. <laughs> Why it, 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 it was it wasn't the chamber and, breakfast though, was it? No, it was not. <laughs> so your first time in the bar once over the month. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> Other than that, I haven't been that busy. Now, I've been doing uh, a lot of talking with citizens about upcoming stuff and uh, where we're planning on going with you know sewer and water. That's a big hot topic out there, and uh, just trying to reassure them and. and let them know that the, we are like coming into a plan type mode. Nothing is being hastily done. It's not going to be done tomorrow. You know, possibly looking at five years down the road. And depending on different areas, could be 20, could be 40 years down the road. It's, it's, it's a money type driven um, industry that we need to get in here. But we need to get in here with the commercial aspect first. And we've already had past meetings and we're possibly going to be able to see a few of those areas come into fruition. So when people start hearing that, that the commercial aspect may be taking precedence over residential, they sort of back up a little bit, but then they say, but we still want it. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's either here or there on what you hear from the individuals. And 
been doing a lot of work preparing for, um, you know, trying to get m my mindset around Thursday's meeting with Welland Park. And uh, we'll see how that goes because we do have a lot of tough things going forward. And, and I've reserved the right to go ahead and take extra time going through these areas, just, just trying to think and be mentally prepared. So that's all I got. All right. Did you have any of your um, commission representation meetings? No. Didn't have any MPO? No, MPO's off right now. I think we go back September maybe. Mm -hmm. I got to get in touch with them because I haven't gotten any emails from them. But I'm pretty sure we quit the last meeting and then we go back in September. Okay. So they're done for the summer. All right. Commissioner White, wonder uh, what you did over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, the tree fair out here was, was great. Um, we, we sold over 700 trees, and wow. uh, there were people lined up, um, you know, to, to waiting to, to buy this tree. So that was really great, great to see that. Plus, that the green is such a beautiful area to have any event. And, yes, I am the go-to person for anything related to the environment, anything for that, and which I fully embrace. So I just have a couple comments. Some people have, um, one woman contacted me about um, old world climbing fern. It's a really invasive um, uh, plant that she saw out at the Oaks Park along the creek there. And she brought it to the attention. I think eventually it got to public works and that was taken care of. So um, mm -hmm. really kudos to public works for getting on top of that because there, there was uh, apparently a certain way that it has to be addressed, how it has to be removed so it doesn't, continue to spread even even worse. So um, that was really good. So that it's called the Old World Climbing Fern. I don't remember what the actual name of it is, but if you look it up and see if you have it anywhere around your backyards, you really should get rid of it. Um, also, people have been contacting me about ATV riding through the creek mm -hmm. area, again, uh, to the extent of it uh, destroying the banks. And we're talking about the area that's Reister Town in Henderson, which is closer to 75, um, just um, not respecting the creek at all. There's not supposed to be any motorized vehicles out there, but to be destroying the, 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 the bank of the creek is really a big problem. So I um, just wanted to, to bring that up. And the last thing somebody asked me about was recycling in, in Northport. I know that our pickups are great, but in the parks, they want to know why some of the parks don't don't have recycling bins, or um, they're right they're not right next to the trash bins. I learned this from doing this in my school that if if you have those recycling bins on one side and the trash on the other side, it's just not going to work because you'll get trash in your recycling and vice versa. Um, so, it would really be great to see us really promote recycling, um, even at our own events. I went to that fire awards ceremony that we had, and I couldn't help but notice, I'm sorry, but they had trash containers out, no recycling containers. So we would really like to see us beef up our recycling efforts. It's so simple to do, and it makes an impression, and, and it would be a good good thing that people walk away with other than saying, ah, oh, how come they don't recycle? I really don't like hearing that, And but they, they are right about that. So okay. that's it. That's I'm it. Off, off my soapbox. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mom. No. <laughs> uh, Commissioner McDowell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, very, very, very busy uh, past month since I've done my commission comments. And first, I think I've missed the first tree fair in probably seven or eight years. That's my right. apologies. I I, my apologies for not being there. But I, I trust that it was a huge success and it was more successful than even last year. Mm -hmm. So... Good job. I, I like your new location, too. Um, I attended the Do the Right Thing recognition ceremony. Honey squad. I also got to hide eggs. That was so fun. Um, PAC 257 invited um, me oh, to yeah. come and uh, help judge their Pinewood Derby and uh, brought back some wonderful memories. And thank you to 257 for that. Uh, there was a ribbon cutting for Atwater Church for their food pantry which used to be at the Salvation Army old location food pantry. So that was really cool to go to. Um, the retirement ceremony for Eric. I'm not even going to attempt his last name. Still, I'm not going to attempt his last name. <laughs> I actually attended um, the League of Women Voters held a webinar on rank choice voting. 
something extremely foreign to me, never heard of it. I was quite interested to see what it looked like. Unfortunately, they were having technical difficulties during the meeting. So I look forward to going back and re-watching it and really picking up the points that I had missed. Uh, kudos, Northport Fire Department. Thank you. I was honored to attend your award ceremony. I know you had to do it for two years because of last year with COVID, uh, you did an upstanding job and thank you very much. Um, Kudos to all of those guys and gals in the fire department. Uh, rededication of the Blue Star Memorial. Gosh, that thing looks beautiful. It was awesome. Um, and I was also a guest speaker for one of the chamber events um, in the morning committee meetings, uh, sharing with them things that were happening in the city. And I think I have everything, Mayor, but I'm also positive. I left off a couple of important things, but by no means does that mean it was not important. So. Thank you so very much. Uh, mine, of course, is, is lengthy. Um, the vine that Commissioner White talked about, uh, I have to give kudos for staff for addressing that, too. The entire park was addressed. Uh, I think it would behoove, uh, um, what do they call them, broadcast announcement, public, public service announcement on Facebook to uh, show what this vine looks like and how our uh, department treated it. So in case people find it at their home, they can know mm -hmm. how to treat it. So just putting that out. Uh, something that I was just really blessed to partake in, and you guys are familiar with Mayor's Feed the Hungry, and they, they are just really stepping it up this year. Uh, they are issuing freezers to pantries and our Awaken Pantry is on the list, and so is Atwater, in order to receive a, a freezer. And then just before Easter, they reached out to me, and they gave me $2,000 worth of gift certificates to give to two pantries. And I chose those two to issue the $2,000. It was $10 gift certificates. You could A family of four could receive four. Um, so that they could, if it, they got it before Easter, they could go get a ham or turkey or whatever. And they had until the end of this month to give them away. And I, as you well know, they gave them away right away. <laughs> it, is, it is gone. Um, I learned something when I was talking to the Atwater School. Uh, the media person out there. There are people moving from other states just to put their children in Florida schools because we're open. And I was amazed. She said it was an average of three students a day just at that school that is coming in. So we've got five elementary schools. Uh, that is a lot of children coming into the system just simply because uh, the state is um, taking care, you know, and in, in opening things up. Uh, really glad that the Senate Bill 50 passed. Uh, that was that fairness sales tax that was led by Gruters. We yes. set, sent a resolution supporting that, and it did pass. Um, is it going I, to the governor's desk, or yes, is it still yeah, going to go it's, through house? It's at his. It, it's yes. at his desk, ready Thank to you. be signed. I did a, attend a chat meet virtually. It was not for just this local, but it was for a bunch of them, just all over, a couple of counties, and that was um, very interesting. They had some reports about the COVID shots and updates on that, and mentioning that, I'm just very thankful that we had shots here and our staff and employees could get shots. I actually got my second one here and the firefighter did really good poking my arm. <laughs> so just really grateful for that. Uh, I did have a teen court meeting. I did attend the Ukrainian tree plant and thank you to uh, the what's the name of your group? People for Trees. People for Trees. Uh, donated, and, and that was just really great. I attended the Alamanda Garden Blue Star, and that was a wonderful uh, event. 
um, Leadership Northport breakfast, um, Bunny breakfast, the Bunny um, squad, you know, all of that was was fun during the Easter time. And there was a fishing tournament that was the Parks and Rec and Kiwanis, and that was really good. The, the police department had an event over at Garden of Five Senses that was extremely successful uh, with Claire's Clubhouse and um, children with autism and stuff who attended that. That was wonderful. Uh, the mural review was just over the top. Um, I watched the Legacy Trail discussion at the county meeting and was really thankful for them moving everything forward. Uh, they approved about $7 million instead of $2 million toward our Legacy Trail um, extensions, the three of them here. Uh, I also attended Eric's retirement, and so many blessings to him. Uh, Awaken Pantry had their ribbon cutting, uh, kicking off an, another pantry that's going to serve our population. Uh, Jason and myself attended, or excuse me, Interim City Manager Yarborough. You call me Jason. <laughs> Celebrated the 100th celebration or year celebration for Sarasota County. Do the right thing. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Those kids, their stories and what they did just, I was like tearing up all the time. If that is an example of what we've got coming in this next generation, mm -hmm. hallelujah, bring them on. Uh, the EDC, both the city and the county, come together out at the Brave Stadium. That was great. Tree Fair was great. I'm going to try to keep my tree alive. <laughs> uh, the yeah, you, you remind me to water it at least every other day. Okay. Um, Pack 257, the Pinewood Derby. <coughs> All five of us were there. That was a hoot. We were picking our favorites in every race, competing <laughs> against each other. Who yeah. could pick the fastest one? And I think Commissioner Langdon didn't yours. I did pretty good. I yes, think you it did. was second overall. But. I'm not going to mention Pete's trouble. I also attended that ranked vote um, discussion about from the League of Women's Voters. Unusual. I, I've never encountered that. The last thing that I wanted to bring up, and this would take a, a consensus, is I was contacted yesterday by uh, the head of the Child Protection Center, and we have an office. I don't know if you realize we have an office out at Bobcat Village out there. They've been there for quite some time. And City Clerk, I've given you the letter that I've gotten and the letter from Senator Gruders. Uh, they want to build a center in Northport. Now this center is almost five million dollars and they need a support letter, would like a support letter from the Commission Supporting this endeavor that they move a, that they move ahead and build a center in Northport. Um, so, uh, senator Gruder says that a state senator of Florida, I fully support and understand the importance of child abuse prevention, intervention, and treatment. The Child Protection Center provides a vital and important function for our community in order to better serve the children and families in South Sarasota County. I'm pleased to support the new construction of a state-of-the-art child advocacy in Northport, Florida. Children are the most valuable resource our community has, and we need to ensure that children are empowered and adults are educated to create neighborhoods where children can thrive and abuse is prevented. I take comfort that this agency will create a safe place for those children who are struggling to recover from the trauma of abuse. And that's signed by Senator Joe, Joe Gruders. Uh, so I am looking for um, a consensus in order to have staff draft a letter 
of support to have me sign it, and they need it by tomorrow. <laughs> you need the letter by tomorrow, or tomorrow it needs to. We need to have it done and it be sent tomorrow. Yes, that's why I was bringing it up today, and I was contacted yesterday. This was this is very fast. Uh, they are moving with with. All of this just moving very, very quickly, and they need the letter of support um, mailed to them or given to them tomorrow. City Attorney, can we give consensus now, or do should we wait until 6 o'clock? I don't see a difference. Okay. <laughs> um, I am absolutely a yes. This way then staff has time to get this thing going. We It's only 3 o'clock now, and it shouldn't take very long to draft a letter. <clears throat> and the template that Senator Gruder has given is tremendous. Fantastic. So. Thank you very I, much for that. Mayor mm -hmm. White. Yes. I'm a yes. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Can I City will... Manager send Commission a copy of the letter, please, once it's drafted? Oh. Uh, City Manager, would you make sure? For once that... it's drafted or for once it's sent? I'm sorry? Once it's signed and sent. Okay, once it's yeah. signed and sent. Okay. Michael, I have copies I of I think it's Senator Gruder's letter so that <laughs> you. you guys have it for us. Uh, for example, Can I get a copy of that as well? Oh, that is. I'm sorry? Yeah, I get a copy. Mm -hmm. I've got them right here. If you'll pass that down, there's one for everybody up here. All right. Uh, that concludes mine. There's one for staff, too, if you need it, city manager. Thank you. Well, actually, I think I handed mine down there. But you guys sorry. get one? City Clerk? Yes, I, I issued theirs before we okay. even started because I knew I was going to be presenting this. Uh, interim City Manager, do you have anything to report? No, ma'am. And City Attorney? No, ma'am. City Clerk? I do not. Wow. It is 3-11. Uh, we will be back here at 4 o'clock for our uh, next meeting. So 3-11, we are adjourned. <laughs>